Hey friends, my name's Timothy, though some people do call me Tim. I'm a professional dungeon master running over 300 games a year, and on today's Monday Musing, we're going to take a community topic brought to us by Nathaniel. Nathaniel asks, what makes D&D the most fun, and how do you get the biggest bang for your buck when it comes to prep time? Now, I feel like I could probably go on and on and on about this for days in some scripted videos in order to try and give a real answer for these kinds of questions. But uh, off the top of my head and just sort of rolling with it, I would say that when it comes to getting the most bang for your buck out of prep, uh, that can really vary a lot from DM to DM. Uh, there's a ton of great ways to um, create uh, short time cost prep that has big results that uh, Mike Shea over at Sly Flourish, uh, colloquially the lazy GM, uh, writes about, and some of those are really solid. I really like the uh, the idea of a list of secrets, information that is unknown to the players that could be stuff that they get to learn about, but you don't necessarily decide where that information is until a situation came comes up in the game that is suitable for that piece of knowledge to be transferred. Uh, that's one great tip. Uh, similarly, uh, a list of complications, things that could go wrong and change the tension beat, uh, are another great list to have on hand that you can pop up when the need for it arises. I would say that when it comes to actual preparation, for me, I really like to have a solid map of locations that I feel like players are going to go, and a handful of back pocket maps for places that could stand in for a lot of different situations, so that when I need to scramble to put something into space for what's going on, I can rip this out of my pocket, throw it into the right area, and just let them run around on it and, and see what happens. Uh, sometimes that can mean that it's important for you to have uh, specific encounters lined up where you know sort of the power level of what you're going to be throwing in front of the players. I don't personally uh, find that to be terribly necessary for me anymore. I'll just put whatever makes sense for the situation into the area and try to, and I can usually tell uh, how bad or good that's going to be on a danger front, and then I can foreshadow it as much as need be so that the characters can then tell their players how dangerous it's going to be, so they make the right choices about whether or not to engage with it or how to engage with it or not engage with it. Uh, random tables are always a solid way to have some additional prep. Uh, if you have gone through and prepped out each of the individual items on a random table, then you can just shrink the random table as things are used and then build it back out again through the week, and that way nothing ever really goes to waste. Uh, I would say, uh, since I run most of my games in the virtual space on Foundry, uh, then there's never a bad thing to be spent about getting familiar with what your characters have on their character sheets so that you can refer to those in the game. Uh, having extra maps on Foundry is obviously easy and getting resources that allow you to pull things in quickly uh, for when things turn is uh, another kind of sort of style of prep that's uh, pretty needed. Uh, Honestly, any time spent focusing on the characters is good time spent in prep that will return the greatest dividends. Remember, especially those players that are giving you some sort of a backstory and history and are leaning into their actual role play of their character a little bit, they have most of their attention focused on their character. And so anything you can do to also focus on those individual characters immediately gets buy-in from those players and makes them feel heard, special, and important. So focus upon on them in your prep will yield greater dividends than focus on your pet story that you're as interested in as they are with their characters. Um, I hope that helps on that front. When it comes to uh, what makes D&D the most fun, uh, frankly, my answer is tension. Uh, a varying tension in, in, a, in any kind of entertainment is completely necessary in order to drag people and draw people to pull them through the story. Uh, when the tension level is completely flat, or when it just stays on a sharp curve in one direction or another, it 
doesn't deliver in the same fashion as an ebb and flow of tension. So in order to make a game as engaging and po as possible, you want to alternate your beats in upward and downward motions in order to make sure that there's a uh, rise and fall of tension. It can generally l lead in the same direction, should be growing higher and higher and higher until you hit some kind of climax where everything drops back down again and you can reset for the next adventure, the next quest, or so on and so have you but you want to have those alternations so that people don't just either burn out on too much tension or get bored to tears by not having any tension at all. Uh, Robin Laws has a book, Hamlet's Hit Points, that's worth uh, giving a little bit of a read if you haven't already when it comes to managing pacing and tension uh, in your games. And uh, he does a great job of taking a look at a few movies uh, that are in general consciousness and or acts, because he does the uh, a Shakespeare play, Hamlet, obviously. Uh, <clears throat> If you go over that and with him in that, you can start to see a little bit of how the rise and fall works on making the game fun. Because to me, tension and the rise and fall of it is the be all and end all of whether or not a game is enjoying, uh, whether or not a game is enjoyable or flat and lifeless. I hope that answers your question. Please, if you have any questions that you would like me to answer here on Monday Musing, please leave them in the comments and I will get to them as soon as I can. Thanks so much and happy adventuring.